Hello, and welcome to Inside the Artist Studio. I'm Rose Frederick, and I am here with my dear friend, Sophie Brown. Hey, Sophie, how are you? I'm good. Hello, Rose. How are you? I'm doing just great. I'm doing well. So um, thanks for uh, taking a little time out of your day. I really appreciate it. And uh, you've had a quite a busy schedule. You've been zipping back home to London and down to Texas and you're busy. Yeah, I've been, I'm down to the San Luis Valley. I've been down yeah. there a, a lot this year. And uh, yeah. so beautiful down there. Uh, so you've been hanging out at uh, Zapata Ranch, I think, right? Yes, yes, yeah. with my uh, fellow compadres and uh, <laughs> partners, partners in art. Yeah, um, this is like, I think this is so exciting. And um, I in I wish I could horn in on your group, but I have nothing to contribute. But it's it's you, Amy Logason, Stephanie Hartshorn, and Jill Sokup, right? You guys just sort of... We somebody... congregate down there and play. Does play somebody... with things we find and... Um, somebody you know. puts the the bat signal up in the air and you're like, oh my God, I got, I got to go down to... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. and who called you? Somebody gave you guys the nickname of the Magpies. I don't know who that was. I think... Um... And maybe Amy, I don't, I, I can't remember who coined it. It's because we went to this um, homestead site and we, all of us were looking around for treasures. It was scattered, scattered with things left from the past. And it's all still there on the ground, sort of half hidden by the sand. And um, yeah, just, just a sort of, it's like collecting and, and, and looking at things that's transport you back in time it's and, a strange uh, place you you took me down there that was so much fun but you're right like stuff that the sand shift and then they uncover stuff and bury other things and yeah and it's all still there we're kind of like um you know uh weekend archaeologists <laughs> yeah right and things just spark your imagination of what life must have been like yeah huge, the valley is so gorgeous and huge skies sort of overarching everything mm -hmm. just you know it gives you a real it's a real time machine yeah it, but it's not I, it, I like I have a sense when you see those sort of ruins of homesteads and things, it doesn't look like it was the most hospitable place. No, until you until you go inside and there's layers of different wallpaper and, um, yeah. you know, little things that are decorative and, mm -hmm. you know, just things that you think about as ho at home, you know, home, home, home things. Yeah. But yes, you 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 feel like you could open the door on a windy day and have a room full of sand, which yeah. you would have done. <laughs> probably. Yeah, probably. Well, yeah. you know what? As an expat, I mean, you're you're kind of a, you know, from you're from London and then transplanted here in the US too. So you you kind of have that a bit of a roaming, you know. Yeah, I'm a westerner as they were called going You're west <laughs> yeah yeah and then so just I know in the past some of your work has the, um there was a series of work that incorporated like a wallpaper pattern and and sort of an homage to your the house you grew up in yeah yes that, that paint I remember the, the painting one painting had a great title which was um Rabbits, a bird, and a bucking horse, which I really, I, yeah. I enjoy. some titles I really enjoy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, it's fun to see how but, like your past merges in and home life merges in. Yeah, things like things you grew up with, like patterns you grew up with, that's just so deeply ingrained. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, things that feel like home or sound like home or smell like home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just little keys. Uh, uh, you don't always recognize the things that make that make an impression until you see them again. Yeah. And, uh, 
and look back realize how important they've become to you you know yeah right yeah you know so i want to so i want to dive in to the work that we're going to get you're going to be in our naturalism now show at gallery 1261 and that is coming up this december 2023 um, and so I want to talk about these works and the, I also would love to talk about them kind of in context with your life and, 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 you know, you, I don't think you have a horse right now, right? You're... I don't, we should talk about are you packed and ready to go? Because that kind of oh. leads right in. <laughs> it was, um, this horse was down on Zapata Ranch, McGuinness, his name is. McGinnis. Um, McGinnis. That's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> That's so um, I just love that he's I, 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 I like the title and yeah. I like the idea. We, we've all been, you know, about to set foot off on a journey or a move or a um something where you don't quite know where you're going or you're not, you know, you're not sure what a move is, you know, when you that's the big move. You've got everything in the car and you're all ready to go. Yeah, absolutely. I, I like I like this horse's attitude and the look in his eye and the fact that you that the that, that, that he's in it in no place in particular. But things are, you know, the sort of environment has some movement in it. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, but but he doesn't know where he's going. He's all loaded up. Doesn't know how it's going to turn out, and I just like the look in his eye. And, and oh. um, we set set this up, and um, McGuinness was a, a great model. It was a painting I had in my mind. Very oh. often, I'm inspired to do things um, because of the things that I see, mm. and because of way uh, a horse is makes an impression. You know, or, or seems particularly, um, you know, has particular keys. He's um, a, yeah, he's got a real spicy look on his face. He does. He <laughs> does. He's like, um, I think it was the first time he'd ever been packed, actually. Oh, really? Ever had all the packed stuff put on, but he was he he was great. And I just, it's a it's a painting about making a move. Yeah. And, you know, standing at the beginning of a journey. Or... You know, it's so funny because what you said is that like the horse, he doesn't know where he's going to. He doesn't know, you know, where he's taking all this stuff on his back. But isn't it sort of human hubris to think we actually know where we're going? Exactly. That's exactly, my, that's exactly the point. Yeah. You know, you don't, you don't know what's going to happen and you don't know how moves are gonna you know when you make a move you don't know how it's gonna turn out <laughs> and you know, no it's... no you really don't you don't and I saw this one in your studio I think you've done some work to it since I saw it in the I saw it in your studio in the spring I think yeah I I, I never really consider them finished until they're varnished that's, yeah that's the date they're finished because I I mess around with them a little bit <laughs> i i i don't know for sure but i feel like um the the blue and that lift of the blue and the and more of the action of that behind there is maybe a little newer from when I, whenever i saw it which you're not going to remember those well i do know i do remember that it had a late late in the process crop oh which is the nice thing about working on board is that you can just get out skill saw and you know take <laughs> off half an inch you know <laughs> yeah yeah wow it's like yeah he feels really he's not he's not worried or he's, he's but he, he, it just has that sense it just has that sense about i mean all horses are kind of you know all the horses that live with us are, are sort of conscripted into our lives yes um, their reactions are so um, are so direct and mm. um, visible because they're physical creatures. You can see what's going on, and I find I find that very um, 
I don't know, speaks to me. Yeah, he's definitely, yeah, he definitely has that going on. He's just, um, I love that because I think it, it does, he does capture that. Like, oh, you think you know where you're going? Yeah, we're going, we're going somewhere. Don't know how long we're going to be gone. Yeah. Don't know. And, and you know, there's moments in life that are like that. I yeah. I'm kind of here at the moment. I'm kind of in one at the moment. I'm like, I've got an itch to move along. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I can kind of see that. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Hey, okay. I'm going to share this again. I'm going to share this, um, ghost horse. Um, this is one that I, I also got to see in person in your studio and it's one that we had a whole group of people. And I think this one just made people stop it a lot. Like there was a lot of extra conversation about this one. Yeah, and it, and it was in my studio for quite a long time, um, and I kind of I kind of miss it not being there. Actually, <laughs> it's uh, it's very ethereal, and I think I think pink skinned blue eyed mm. horses have that have a kind of you look into their eyes, and there's like a whole universe in there because you yeah. and depths in their eyes you know but, what... um there's just something like something a, a, about a, something otherworldly mm -hmm. a, about um things that are left out and um bits of bits of shadow and odd light a very a very long long light um you know it feels like it feels like um the horse is either swimming or um or flying through the clouds Cla yeah i think of clouds uh-huh and uh yeah well and sort i love they are not there you know i love what you've got going on with this one too because just the you know, you've, you've created this movement with the brushstrokes and with these just flicks of paint too, that look like they look like they could have been almost accidental, though. I know they're not in your work, but they have a loose, um, a loose quickness to them that I think also add to this ethereal sense with this piece. Yeah. I yeah, but um, I don't know a lot of the time how marks are made. I mean, I don't, I try not really to consider it, <laughs> if you see what I mean. Um, not to control it? Not to, is that what you mean? I just, I just you know, I, I try to respond and then there'll be, I try to respond to what's there. Yeah. We're not really... I don't really concentrate on making a mark unless it's something like um, one of the late, there's often a late stage thing that happens. And it's where I sort of stopped this painting was masking off his profile at the front and then spray painting that white so that it stood out. Yeah. And it just made such a big difference in the painting mm -hmm. to have something like, that to have that sharp line, which is just a masked off line. Yeah. Um, and it made everything else softer and more, you know, here and there. But that was the, the and I oh, and I thought I'll stop, I'll stop this here because that's quite interesting. Yeah. Um, so you're still playing with a bunch of different like spray paint and now you're talking about your you're bringing oil paint into it and yeah there's an adventure it's been two decades since i made the well no that's not quite true made one oil painting in two decades <laughs> really but yes yeah i called stephanie and i said what do i need <laughs> what what does this that and the other and she said well this medium does gave me a whole bunch of pointers which was great <laughs> wow and oh, um wow. perfect it's an adventure yes but some things I mean I, there's things I love about acrylics 
that you can, um, you know, you could just get charcoal out and draw on the top of it and then wash it off. And, you, you know, stuff's dry immediately. And, mm-hmm. I mean, especially in Colorado, it dries so quickly. Yeah. Um, but then there's things that I'm finding really frustrating, like um, just not being able to get the true intensity. Like, you know, like, um, I don't know, there's colours in oil paint, like viridian, which will invade the whole thing so quickly and are so intense and remain intense um acrylics dry different colors yeah um, oh you know. really yeah they the dark paints dry lighter and they they're not the same colors you put down oh so a lot of the, the so I'm, I'm looking into starting off in acrylics and getting a good jump on things quickly yeah and then moving into oil moving into oil because it's you, an experiment which i love yeah it's because you can uh start with a water base and put oil on top but not the other way around right yeah once you've started with oil that's it you know, there's no going back yeah yeah oh god i can't wait to see those that's gonna be fun it is kind of fun <laughs> yeah so tell me about wellington braids he was a horse I saw at a, a clinic in Wellington, and I, I, I'm I'm very interested in uh, I mean, all, all most of the horses that I paint have evidence of this life they've been sort of you know that they live within they live within the human you know the human parameters and they have restrictions and. Their relationships with their people and and they're so think about horses it unlike dogs which will just you know come into your pack and be part of your pack horses don't really they remain horses fundamentally they're so rooted in nature and yet they're so generous to their people and sometimes you I'm, I'm, there's evidence of people and the, like um and I think of it like we all have lives, a big bulk of which we, we have no control over. Mm-hmm. We're controlled by, uh, you know, having to do our taxes at the beginning of the year and having to do, you know, having to, you know, comply with the rules and regs and, you know, yeah, just the world we live in. And horses do that sort of on, you know, live lives like that. And yet they remain so consistently themselves. So the bridled horses, the evidence of care in the braids and and the willingness in the horse and the concentration on work, all those things come, uh, uh, things I'm thinking about when when I was painting this horse. You know, it's an interesting thing with a horse, isn't it? That they could kill you and they have killed their riders. Not, not meaning to, they're not mean animals generally, but. They'll try and not, not, they'll try to avoid it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But they're, but they're big. They're, you know, they, there's a lot of pounds there. There's hooves and teeth and, and, and accidents happen right with them, but they're not generally mean animals and so you know and because they are service animals so often you know that that it feels like there's an extra responsibility as a human to a horse does that yeah yeah well they they yeah they 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 don't live as they would live in nature i mean things like you know, stabling and and exercise. I mean, there's, there's quite a lot involved in taking care of a horse. Yeah, I mean, you've got to make sure it gets enough exercise and you know look after its feet. And yeah, 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 um, yeah. A lot of responsibility, and but once you have that, and it always seems to me when you start talking about horses that 
it's so much a part of you too, that of course you're painting horses. Yeah, it's, I mean, I have been branching out into other subjects, mm. but they still remain, you know, mm. they I feel you've got to paint what's, um, to me, I feel like I have to paint the things, the combination of the things that are on my mind and um, how I feel about them. You know, well, and very yeah. often I can see that in a horse metaphor. I mean, I could see, oh, I've got to do my taxes in a, a horse that is going, oh, I've got to do this, you know? <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Well, you know what I yeah. mean? I, I see it. I can see things in that metaphor quite a lot. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. But, um, so tell me. Does that make any sense? Yes, of course. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, and especially when you know the animal that well, and you, um, one of your friends called you a horse whisperer, that you, <laughs> that you yeah, generous. that you, that you have this um, sort of sixth sense with horses, a communicate, an ability to kind of communicate on a different level than just a horse and rider which makes sense it may perhaps a deeper empathy maybe with horses I don't know or maybe you see that connection yeah so well yeah yeah I, I I feel like I can understand like the, like this painting pirouette this horse this horse is beautiful and the rider is also beautiful but the, they've been together for a while and this is a canter pirouette which is quite an advanced move and the horse is so relaxed and the communication is so subtle and gentle and beautiful it, it was a magic thing to watch horses do have incredible personalities though too don't they yeah they're also a little bit psychic you know Oh. they see their people they see people and they 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 feel people's feeling you know they feel things they're very they're very acutely attuned to you know the inner attitude of other of people yeah as well you know i think it's part of being a herd herd animal you have to be attuned to you know the whole herd if you're yeah. grazing and there's another horse over there and he sees something and then you, you know you see it all the time it's like with deer when one goes like this they all go like that <laughs> you know yeah. what is it it's very but it's very uh, subtle there's so many subtleties and uh this pair was so beautifully together when i saw them tell me about the tell me about the cropping choice like I, I think this works so well and it gets the, it gets that, um, bond, but it's also cropped in a really interesting way. Yeah. Well, it never, it, it would never came down from being, you know, it, it was, I, I do tend to concentrate on the horse. Mm. I find people, um, just because. I don't. I, I don't know. I just find I. I, I feel that most of the expression was for me was within the body of the horse, which was work. You know, muscular horse, working hard, beautiful. See the concentration between. You know, you, you can see, yeah, like the effort that is the and the physicality of him I, I do concentrate on the horse they're expressive to me in a way that um people are complicated you know yeah yeah and thus they are it seems to me that they they say everything in their physicality mm. and I wanted to to keep that sort of passage of blues um yeah. being the main thing and I wanted him to fill fill the whole thing and his really it's, a, it's not a big painting yeah it's it uh, what size is it 
Fanny A. Beck. Yeah. Uh, it's about uh, 10 by, it's not very 10 big by 20 all. or something. Pardon? About like a 10 by 20. A bit bigger than that, I think. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Wow. Um, I love them. I also love the movement of the cool, cooler blue into a slightly lighter, warmer, and even into his shoe, the rider's shoe. Yeah. Yeah. It really just sort of keeps that beautiful theme going. Okay. I'm going to share one more here. You can um, see the connection between the, you know, the way the rider is sitting, the hands and the yeah. legs. And, you know, the, the communication is all there between yes. the seat and the hand. And, and the, the rider's horse. relaxed, too. Yeah, the rider. Oh, beautiful, beautiful rider. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this one's a this one's a dark horse. <laughs> I know this one. Sometimes. These are these are horses from Zapata, too and uh just grazing in a valley and sometimes when you start a thing i don't know when you start something you have this vision in your head and it, it uh, for me personally i tend to start in a quite a loose way and then and then i i, I tend to over I, I very often over complicate things but sometimes I get so attached to the start and in this case I got so attached to the start I I like the way I, I you know blocked out the color and the brevity of things and I like that they're kind of taken out of a sort of real space there's a, you know just big flat areas you, and I just, I just didn't think I could improve on it in any way. So, nice. I, <laughs> so there it is. Nice. Uh, I know it was not going to be like that. Really? Um, yeah. Well, no, it wasn't. It was just sort of start of a underpainting mm -hmm. and blocking in, and then I was like, uh, I, I, I just like the way that the different horses blended into their sort of underpainted local color and, mm. and uh, mm. didn't want to do anything else to it and it sat in my studio and I was like oh, I should work on that I should work on that and then I'm like I don't want to work on that I think that's it's done finished yeah that's gonna be it's always a question that I have in the back of my mind is like when do you know it's done I don't I don't know I mean, this is an experiment on knowing when it's done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, maybe they all are, though. Like, you can... I know. And I, I, the, the paintings that have, you know, hit the hit the trash can because I didn't know when to stop. Oh. Many and too numerous to mention. I mean, wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, so it's more that way. There's there's like you've gone too far. That, yeah. Yeah. And also, um, you can destroy the surface, you know, oh, quite easily with with acrylics. Do you have to just um, you you have to kind of let go of preconceived notions? Yeah, I don't know. I try not to work on anything. That's why I tend to have a lot of stuff going in the studio mm -hmm. at the same time. There's like a lot of drawings that could be paintings. There's a lot of paintings that are started. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of paintings that are that just I have to see and live with. And to see if I, I try not to paint on things unless I know what I want to do with them, you know. Yeah, but sometimes you've got to make. You know, I mean, you have to make choices. You have to make choices about what's important. You can't have everything all important in one. At least I can't. In, you know, in one painting. Yeah. And usually, for me, it's very often a case of getting rid of things, oh. you know, uh, or simplifying things. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like, like the masking of the profile on that ghost horse painting. 
got rid of, you know, just obliterated that whole piece. And oh. It's very often a, to me, it's very often a simplification. That's interesting. So this one, that five in line painting, yeah. that I thought I would leave was like, I'm not going to go through the whole painting and then go back to simplifying. I'm just going to leave that simple like that. <laughs> Nice. Hey, so um, let me ask you one more question, then I'm going to let you go. I really appreciate you carving out some time today. But when, when you meet up with the girls, with your gal pals down at Zapata yes. with Amy and Stephanie and Jill, um, you guys have actually been making found our object sculptures too while you're down there, right? Yeah, I have bison out there in my garden. <laughs> you do? I do. A couple of little ones, not big ones. <laughs> Is that, I mean, aside from like the camaraderie of it, of course, that's got to be wonderful. And that it's for women, um, you know, and and um, I would I would guess there is a is a different dynamic there. Um, but also does working in 3D has that influenced your painting? Mm, maybe. Maybe. There's a I've been doing um some collages, some little collages of that area and some bigger collages. And and I've also started a couple of big paintings of, of it too. Mm -hmm. Um that are sculptural in the same way as found objects, um, the found object sculptures are, uh -huh. because they're like, um, they're not they're not in a, a in a, an illusional space all the time. There's like a there's like a the illusion of space, and but then there's flat pieces that might be you know like a piece of wood graining or um a rust something you know a surface that, that looks like rust or something is that, that on your is paintings? flat on top on paintings yeah yeah so that's been a whole they, it has it, I, I think it probably has yeah mm -hmm. um but yeah it's wonderful working in a group yeah. I mean and, and just um you know understanding or, or getting a glimpse into other people's processes and uh, well, you know, and the also their mind like, works around art and yeah, I was gonna say like also their own self consciousness or their fears and phobias around their work or I it's so peculiar. It's so peculiar because it's such a solitary thing most of the time. I mean, for twenty, I would you know for decades I've worked totally alone I mean I don't even my studios have always been not in sort of complexes of other studios but I've always been somewhere sort of independent and I mm -hmm. kind of like a, a bit of a hermit but it's been so wonderful and open big opening up of of um for me in with ideas that I would you know that usually you say to yourself and and uh very often just bat away but but in this case the ideas you know the ideas flow between us and um it's it, it's a different thing we, um, we make things that none of us would make by ourselves I yeah. think it's uh it's playtime I was going to say, it sounds like there's a lot of play, which... There is a lot of play and a lot of just mm. letting our minds go on, on, a, on you know, around, a, around some content and some subject matter, mm -hmm. um, which also is not necessarily subject matter that, you know, is within our, our usual scope. Yeah. So, but, so it, it, it's very freeing. It's great yeah. fun. <laughs> oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. Well, and I imagine the evenings too of talking then 
afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it is it is fun. It is good fun. And we talk about, you know, things that I, I never really discussed with anybody before, things just about, you know, making a you know, had just living the life with those problems, with the problems of, you know, going to work every day and and uh and generating things that didn't exist before you know yeah. <laughs> out of yourself wow and the stages that each of you are in your career too is i think it's i think it's just such a wonderful group in that that what each of you brings to it because amy is the only sculptor of yes <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. No, I loved our conversation that we had about um about the four of you collaborating. I thought that was just really fun. That one's one of our dinner with artist talks that you can find on the podcast, but that that was just a They're really such fun. generous generous women. Yeah. It yeah. has been great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, all four of you together lift each other up in a really unique way. I think it's amazing. Um okay, well, Sophie I'm going to let yes. you go. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you pleasure. for being here. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Uh, so your work will be in the December show, Naturalism Now. And Sophie will be here for opening night, just yes. getting back from Texas. So hopefully everything will go smoothly. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. So, oh my gosh. So uh, to find out more about this work, uh, visit Gallery 1261 website and the Art Soul website. And um, we thank you for listening in. And Sophie, thank you for your time. I really appreciate you coming. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate always, you too. <laughs> always good to see you. Happy holidays. Happy, yeah, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. Take care. Yeah. Bye bye.